Hi, my name is Steve Kinsley. I'm the Chief Wackadoo at Wackadoo Information Systems. Today, we're in the Contract to Close application talking about the Task List page. Now, if you've not watched the Contract to Close overview, please go view that before watching this so that you'll be able to put it in context. Now, what we're going to do is go into an active contract. We're on the Active Contracts page, which is the default that you get when you log in. We're going to go look at this buyer contract. When you open a buyer contract, you see the property and contract info in the upper left. You see your contact info in the lower left. On the upper right, you've got your note information. And down here on the lower right, you've got some information about tasks. Sort of a sneak preview, if you will, if you want to look at the task, late, task list page in a few minutes. Rented lips, sorry. Okay, so the hot list, these are things that are late or are due immediately. Again, this contract is uh, out of our randomly generated data set. And the contract date, as you see, is November last year. So, of course, a lot of things are going to be marked as late. Over on the right side at the bottom, we've got our next incomplete task for each top level task group. Yes, I'm reading the screen. Sorry, this will make more sense when you get into the task list page. So, let's do that. We're going to go over, let's go we have with the contract selected, we get the task list page and we click on that. So what we get is a recap of our property and contract info and our contact info at the top. A few less notes to look at, but so something that might have been current you would, would be at the top of the list. And down at the bottom, we have our top level tasks. Now those break down. Most of them have sub-level tasks. The contract date does not, but what you do when you get a new contract has 15 subtasks. So when you click on that, you see this long list of things open up. Now, on the task list page, and for any task, if it's been marked complete, it's been set gray on the screen. If it has uh, not been com marked complete, it's green. However, if it's late, it will be highlighted in red. Now, if it's something that's due in the next day or couple of days, it'll be marked purple, and that'll, that'll be automatic. We won't see very many of those in a randomly generated data set with this kind of uh, date from six months ago. So uh, what we're looking at are three different levels of tasks that you can assign. Now, why three? Because it fits nicely on the screen and because that's kind of where people are able to keep track of things. Um, and so three was deemed enough in terms of the number of levels that we have for contracts. So I'm in the new contract activity. There are a number of things I have to do when I get a new contract. I have to receive contract from the agent. I have to get the, uh, the info from the agent. I have to get um, process the agency documentation. You see the list of things here. And some of these things are just tasks. Some of these things are things that I'm waiting for. They have to give me access as a transaction coordinator to the contract. And you see the little icon here. Um, some of these things are emails that need to be sent. Now, you'll notice that when you roll over the email icon, you get the little message saying, click to open emailer. Well, what happens is this goes out and uses the template for this particularly defined task. And we'll get into that in just a second. So you see that um, as you mark something complete, that we get the percentage complete updated across there. And when I get to the last one, it says, great, that was... 100% complete, and now I've processed all of the agency documentation. You'll see that this was automatically set to be completed as well. So, for example, this one here, where it's marked as 75% complete for processing the contract, and yet is marked complete, again, it's randomly generated data. Didn't all make logical sense. But you understand where we're going with this. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to walk across each of these buttons here because this is where you're going to be uh, taking a look at things. So we're going to look at the welcome new buyer email task. And the first thing, if you're just, I'm not clicking, I'm just rolling over. You see that clicking here will complete the task. It tells the system that you've done that thing. Now, if there were subtasks, for example, if I wanted to unselect process contract, you'll see that, oh, it went to 0% complete. And all of these things got marked as undone. But if I got here and said, oh, no, I'm done processing the contract, it's a bit of shorthand and allows you to go in and um, mark everything underneath it. That gets a little dangerous when you're up at the top level because you have so many different tasks underneath some of these things. 
So I would never really click on the checkbox at the top level here because that would take all of these 15 things and mark them as true, which would then go through and mark each of the subtasks as true. And the purpose of this is not to just mark them as closed, but to actually go through and do the work. So the idea is that you would work at the lowest level possible and let it build up. Now, so we're going to go take a look at this welcome new buyer task. And the first icon here is a view edit task details. So let's click on that and we'll see that we get a little dialogue that pops up, big dialogue. We see all of the people who are associated with the contract from a buyer standpoint. These are the these are the your clients or your agent's clients, I should say. <clears throat> You're going to see an email template name here. This is the welcome new buyer email template, excuse me. <coughs> This is the welcome new buyer email template. Now, if you wanted to, you could click here to open the email. Or you could use that icon that was out on the other, um, at the other level. You didn't have to come in here to do that. If I want to take a look at low level task configuration settings, there's a bunch of stuff that goes into defining a task. And this is, a, a, you don't look at this when you're doing the normal job. But when you're setting up your task lists, these are things that you'll need to, to pay attention to. Task list temp, task templates are a separate video. So keep that in mind. So we have a bunch of different task types. This is an email task. We've got appointments, inspections, you see all of that. It has a start date. We have assigned a start date to this particular task. You might put a duration on it. You don't have to. Um, and then there are related resources. These would be all of the different people that you would be interested in having something to do with this task. So for example, we're welcoming the new buyer. So we're obviously the client is there. Obviously the client type is buyer, not seller. And you have escrow agent over there. Sorry, that should have lined up properly. And then you have in the upper right, you have any timing relative information. So this is supposed to happen one day after the contract date. And again, that's something that gets set up when you define your task lists. Now I'm going to click here and say, let's close that up because I don't really care about those because they were properly set up. If you have a note about this task, you can do that. I'm going to hit cancel here because I didn't want to make any changes. But that gives you quick access to uh, the people there. Now you'll notice that you had the buyers listed up here. So you probably didn't have to go into there to get their phone number, that kind of thing. So here I am. Now, one of the things about the task list page is that you've got the ability to add new tasks. And I am going to, oh, we don't quite fit on the page. Okay, so I'm gonna click the new task button here and watch what happens. I get a little dialogue, it's asking for a new task name, new task name here. Okay, click. And you'll see, I have a new task called new task name here down at the bottom. Now, if I want to, I was looking at the new buyer. This is something that has to do with that new buyer email. I want to do something before I send that new buyer. So I simply drag that item up here and drop it. And there it goes. And I put it in the right order. Now, in a similar way to creating an ad hoc task, I have the ability to duplicate a task. So if I wanted to duplicate this welcome new buyer, because I wanted to welcome the buyer, but then send an email that's similar to that to someone else, but I wanted to edit it or something, I, 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 this doesn't make logical sense from a business standpoint, but we're going to duplicate the task. What's going to happen here is it's going to wel it's going to duplicate the welcome new buyer task and every subtask beneath it, as it says here. I'm going to hit OK. Now, there weren't any subtasks under welcome new buyer. But here it is. I literally duplicated the welcome new buyer task. And it would have all of the same information, have all of it would be an exact copy of it that I could then go in and edit and change. Maybe I wanted to use a different template for this. You know, maybe I wanted to use uh, the video shoot schedule. Why would I ever do that? I don't know. Um, welcome new video buyer. Why? Just because I'm doing that. And I do that and say, great, there's the welcome new video buyer. That makes no sense. I'm just going to delete it. That's what the X is for. So I'm going to go delete that. Again, it's going to wipe out the subtasks underneath it as well. Keep that in mind. 
So I'm going to delete our, our new ad hoc new task name here, task, because I didn't really care about that. You start to see how to get around and how to sort of manipulate this when you have something that you just want to throw on the list. Now, so what happened here was I had a duplicate task. I have the next button over is the schedule task. Now, you can schedule any task. Now, there's a weird thing that happens when you're talking about appointment tasks because on an appointment task, this is the same date as the actual appointment. However, I might have a task that says schedule something. In fact, I'm going to go off of this new buyer email and we're going to go over and take a look at inspections. And I'm going to pick, uh, let's do radon inspections just for fun. I have an, a task here on my radon inspection appointment sub list. One of these things is to schedule the appointment. Well, let's pretend that we haven't done any of these things. So we mark that down as zero. Okay, great. I need to schedule the appointment. I don't do that by clicking this schedule the task because this is scheduling the task of scheduling the appointment. The actual appointment is this one here. You see the calendar icon as the task icon. This is the radon inspection. These are things that you have to do around it. So I need to schedule this thing. It's important to keep that in mind. So if I come up and I want to schedule my radon inspection, I do that at this level where I see the actual appointment icon. And so I do that. And I go, okay, great. I don't actually have a start date and time. I'm going to just grab today at 3 o'clock, 3.30. Let's say 3.30 today. Okay, great. I'm going to save that. And we go in and we see that the date that we scheduled it for is today at 3.30. So you know exactly when I'm shooting this video. If I go in and look at the details for this particular task, you'll see that it has a start time. This is the actual appointment. Now I'm going to select a vendor. I've got uh, Bird Radon LLC, and I don't know what the amount is of um, uh, how much they're going to charge or how much they would recommend for the, the fix. Um, that's there. If I was doing this for a different type of uh, inspection, um, then I would, I would select that here. Or Actually, I don't even need to select it because it's pre-done for these particular ones for this task list. So, okay, so here I am in my radon inspection, and I could schedule it. Now, if I wanted to set up a notification task or a reminder, a follow-up to this thing, I could do this. This is very similar to the ad hoc task that we set up a moment ago. And I can pick it either you know, three days after the completion of, or you'll see the note here. If I do a negative number, that's actually relative to the day. So if I did negative, then that would be three days before the start of the scheduled appointment. And that would put a task on the on my task list. And if I was looking at the calendar or something like that, then I would see it there as well. I'm going to cancel and not, not do that one. Okay. And we've already talked about the delete. Now, I'm going to go down and take a look at... Sorry. Now we're heading back to our email task. So I'm going to go back up to our new contract. I'm going to come down and I'm going to go look at the welcome new buyer. Now, I'm going to ask the question... Why would this be marked as late? Well, because this particular task was supposed to happen one day after the contract date, and the contract date was last November. That's why that one's red. So I would come across here and go, okay, great. I see that this is actually an active link for email uh, tasks. And the reason being, there's a lot of time spent by a transaction coordinator going back and forth in and out of email. And a lot of times you're pulling a template in or you're, you're manually typing this thing. And the whole purpose of this tool is to pull all the information together into the template that you wanted to. And bang, there it is. There is your email to all of the people associated with this who are buyers. And if we go back and look, those would be the random ones. Um, yes, this is my personal email address. Please don't spam me. Um, and you see it's welcome new buyer and it's got the name of the contract here. Now, yes, it's randomly generated data. You wouldn't normally have five different people's names there. But you can edit this thing. It's just a simple little HTML editor and you can go out and if you wanted to, um, you'd be able to just, you don't have to do anything else. You could just hit send if you wanted to, if you're happy with your template. If you're not happy with your template, 
you have a button here that would let you go in and edit the email template directly. Now, editing email templates is something that's handled in another video, but this is one of the ways to get into it. Now, here's a trick. If you kind of like this email template and you are happy with it and you've created a task list set that you're using, but you want to customize it for this. Now, this is part of the task list creation thing, so stick a pin in this one and hold it for that video. Um, you might want to create a new email template just for this task group. So you would then say clone email template and it would take you into a copy of this email template and assign that copy to this task list. Um, it does a lot of things behind the scenes for you, but it gives you a way to set up a, a different set of tasks for multiple teams that you might be working with. If you wanted to, you could drag and drop a single attachment into this email. Uh, at this point in time, uh, we have on our development list the idea of uh, supporting multiple attachments, but right now it's a single attachment. And I could cancel that. So um, you sort of see how things are filled in. Now, there are a couple of things that are not filled in. DD fee recipient. DD fee. This is this is an example of a template that we've not tightened up very well because this should be for this should be the attorney information. But those would be the things that you would go in and, and fill in. But everything else is in there. Your closing's been scheduled for at the legal services, blah, blah, blah. The, the address, your first names of your, your clients and things like that. So you see what's going on there. You see how quickly that could happen. So I go into my task list and go, okay, great. I'm at the point where I need to do welcome new buyer. I go click. I go bang on the send email. I'm not doing that now because these are fake email addresses. And it's done. And you did that thing. You didn't have to type it up. You didn't have to do any any kind of uh, fill in the fields except for, uh, in that particular case, the due diligence fee recipient information. So you get the idea about the task list page here. Okay. Now there's one more thing that I need to point out. And this is something that's not obvious, but we're going to do this now. You saw how when I dragged and dropped a new task. Okay. New task. Okay, and I'll go put that in there. And I dragged and dropped that. You see, I could put that anywhere that I wanted to. The reason that that did a drag and drop on the, or the drag and drop did the location change, it did the list shuffling, is because we had this set on change order. If I said relate timing, I now want to relate the timing of this new task to, I'm going to do this to my due diligence date. So I'm going to take this and drag it, and I'm going to drop it on my due diligence date. Now watch this. It's now defaulting to three days before the due diligence date. I'm sorry, three days after the due diligence date. Well, I want to do this new task three days before. And I say OK. And that's it. That's all I had to do. Now, when I go look at the detail for this task, you'll see that this task is scheduled, again, less than zero means before. If I wanted to change that here, I could. I could just say, you know, two days after. And you'll see that that's all relative to the, to the due diligence date. Okay? So you see how that works. I'm going to, just for fun, delete the new task. And that'll clean everything up. All right. So that's everything that you need to know about the task list page. Um, there are probably a few other things that you could uh, look at in here. Um, one thing that I'll point out, uh, in fact, uh, I'll go back to the active contracts page and point something out here. If we look down here at the right hand side again, this will make a little bit more sense to you. Um, you see that we've got on the left hand side, these are the top level tasks. And if it is a top level task, it has a little dash here, meaning nothing. Um, and then if you want to, you can go click on this. So for example, I want to go find out, oh, wait a minute, I have to go work on the receive the client info sheet task. Well, clicking on that took me back to the task list page for that contract and opened up the group that that task was in, the panel that that was in. So right here, receive the client info sheet from the client. First incomplete task underneath that item. That was the next thing that had to happen underneath the attorney. So again, helping you answer the question, what do I have to do next? Now, if we go back to the active contracts page, you'll see that that also works for the hot list. 
So for example, oh, wait a minute, I need to welcome the new buyer. I need to send that email. Well, it opens up the new contract panel and takes you to that where you see the welcome new buyer. So you have a quick way to sort of navigate back and forth from the active contracts page to the task list page. Those are going to be the two main places that you are when you're working on a contract in particular. Now, you're going to spend a lot of time on those pages. So that's just about everything you need to know about the task list page and the active contracts page that goes with it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to us. You can find our contact information on the Contact Us page at wackadoo.info. Thank you for watching the video.